Hey, it's Tim from Tiki Boom Design. We're gonna be going over how to make this very cool typography illustration. Let's roll. Let's get started by breaking down this typography illustration. So it looks kind of complicated, but it really isn't. We got one path, which is the spine, we're gonna call it, and it's one continuous path. Then we have one shape, which is a circle that has a gradient. And then we have this ending circle, which has another gradient. These circles will blend um, together along this path. These little flare things on the outside, these are just an offset path of the, what we're gonna call a spine here. Then we have another layer that is mimicking lighting. And then we have another layer for texture. Now that we've broken down how this works, let's go ahead and actually do it. So this is gonna, let's have some fun here. So what I've done is I've done this typography in Procreate and then traced it and you know made some final adjustments here in Illustrator. So this is one continuous path. So this is gonna be really important for this uh, blend technique to work. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and do Command C and then Command V and we're gonna put it off to the side. We're gonna take it off the canvas. So we're just doing that um, so we can use this later for the flare so we can make the offset path. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do an ellipse. So I'm going to activate the ellipse tool, make an ellipse. I believe the size that I did uh, in the illustration above here was um, 51 pixel size. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and sample this gradient. Then what I'm gonna go ahead and do is Command C and Command F, which is space in place. And I'm just going to put this circle and I'm gonna go ahead and sample this gradient here. Now, keep in mind, you can do whatever gradient, whatever colors that you wanna do. I'm just showing how to do it um, this way. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna activate the blend tool. So we're gonna come over here to the blend tool, which is this little icon. You can also find it at our object, blend, and make. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to do it with the icon here. So we just do it, the blend tool, which is W, and you click one shape and then you click another shape and it creates the blend. Great, we got the blend. Now what we're going to do is we're gonna select the blend and this continuous path typography that we made and we're gonna go up to object and we're gonna go up to blend and then we're gonna go to replace spine. And now, as you can tell there, this blend is now going along the spine. So now you can see why it was super important to make this spine here continuous. Then what you can do is you can go to double click the blend tool and get the blend options. Again, you can go up to object blend and blend options. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to specify distance. So as you can tell, just right off the bat, that made it incredibly better. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do one pixel uh, specify distance. And what this is basically doing is this is saying, um, I want these shapes along this path to be one pixel distance between each other, which creates the illusion here um, of this kind of 3D illustration. Awesome. So that was pretty easy. Uh, one thing to notice is that it kind of looks like the H and the whole cursive line goes from the H uh, with the O being in the back. So we can do that easily. As you can tell here, you still have your initial three shapes. So we got the circle and we're gonna go ahead and bring that to the front. And that was command shift forward bracket. And now it is mimicking better what we did up there. Okay, so a really cool thing to think about with is lighting. So the lighting is going to be dictated by the gradient in each one of these circles. So if we have this circle selected and we go up to the gradient tool, you're gonna see that you can adjust the angle. So if we go to 20 degrees, it changes everything a little bit and it changes the blend all throughout. And then if we go to this circle and let's say we go on that one as 20 degrees, now uh, it's creating a really interesting sort of different uh, light source. So it's almost like it's coming from this direction. So that's really neat. Um, and you can go ahead and choose whatever uh, options you want to do. You could have these be solid colors if you'd like. 
All right, so next, let's go ahead and create the flare. This is uh, kind of the tedious work a little bit, but it pays off so much. I'm gonna bring this to the front, shift command forward bracket. We're gonna center it on the canvas here. We're going to go uh, up to object and we're going to go to path. And then I'm going to do offset path. I'm gonna do 40 and then the join. Uh, usually it's on miter, but we're gonna make it round. So that way it'll round here at the end. And then I'm gonna take this middle spine and I'm gonna go ahead and shift it over to here. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and select all this and I'm gonna go up to object and compound path and release. And then as you can tell, now we can do each of these little uh, parts here. So I'm gonna actually delete this part. And so first, let's just go ahead and do this one. We'll go through the process of creating this flare and then I will time lapse it. So let's do this. So I'm gonna do plus, and this is basically gonna create nodes here. And I'm gonna do a plus there and I'm gonna delete and delete. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and go to the gradient and I'm going to activate this gradient. So there we go. So as you can tell here, this gradient basically looks like it's coming out of the shadow because this first stop is the background color and the second stop is a version of this blue. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and make it uh, round cap, round corner, uh, three pixels and I'm gonna go ahead and do a profile this profile so this gives it just kind of a little bit more depth all right so I'm gonna do the rest and I'm gonna start the time-lapse and uh, now We got our flare done. Now let's put some little bit of magic touches on here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this background block here. I'm gonna do Command C, Command F. Bring it all the way to the front. I'm gonna use the eyedropper tool. We're gonna select this swatch right here. And what this has basically done is it has put it to overlay 100% and it's using this gradient. So as you can tell here by doing light to dark and being overlay, it accentuates the highlights and accentuates the shadowing. For our final touch, let's put a little bit of texture. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take this lighting overlay and I'm gonna go ahead and lock it, so Command 2. I'm gonna take this little color block back here, I'm gonna make a copy and then paste in place. I'm gonna bring it all the way to the front. And what we're gonna be doing is using this shape as a mask. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna import a texture. And I'm looking through here, I'm looking through, this is a texture set that we made and these are recolorable, which is cool. So they're recolorable TIFFs. So I'm gonna go ahead and place this one and just make it that size right there. Yeah, we could do that. And as you can tell here, I'm gonna, it's, it's above everything and it's kind of bleeding out. So I'm gonna go ahead and send it to the back. So I just did Command Shift Back Bracket. I'm gonna select this texture and this uh, rectangle that we just made. I'm gonna do Command 7. And there we go. So it's adding a little bit of wonderful magic. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and select the texture. So I'm doing the direct select tool within the mask. And all you have to do is just do the eyedropper tool and you can go ahead and select that. As you can tell here, it changes. Uh, let me actually make sure that it's changing. Uh, let's do this. So I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that you have the texture selected. And let's just choose this blue. Yeah, there we go. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose this background color and let's go ahead and make sure it's centered on the artboard. And then we're gonna go ahead and do overlay. And then we're gonna do, I'm gonna do like 35%. Uh, and then it just adds a very subtle texture so you could adjust as you want. That's it, I hope this has been fun. Hope you got some inspiration and uh, have fun with your typography illustrations, bye. Hey, this kitty wants you to like this video, subscribe, get notifications, 
just do what the kitty wants. Bye.